Hello, Brown family. Today, we wanted to talk to you a little bit about long-term care and disability insurance and how this can benefit your family. Uh, first, I was going to talk about the different types of long-term care services as well as the premium costs. Uh, to start, there are a number of in-home services where someone will come to your house and assist you with daily activities such as dressing, bathing, and preparing food. Uh, there are also nursing homes available where someone will be available to you almost 24-7, but this will cost a lot more. Now, part-time assisted living will cost about $20,000, while a full-time in-home service would be anywhere from forty dollars to $45,000. Now, a nursing home can be anywhere from eighty dollars to 95000 so an in-home service will definitely be more cost efficient. There are two options when considering the amount of coverage that you'll need. You can either get a dual policy with the same amount of coverage for both of you. If you would like to have enough coverage to pay for in-home services for two years, the premiums will be about $2,700 together. Uh, if you're wanting to have enough coverage for, uh, for nursing homes, the premiums will be about $6,500 together. But uh, you can also uh, customize the amount of coverage that you have for each individual. Since Jim is about 15 years older than Patty, uh, his premiums are going to cost a lot more, and he may not have as much of a need for these services as Patty will. So because of that, I would recommend about $20,000 of coverage for Jim and about $45,000 for Patty. This would cost you guys about $2,300 a year in, in premiums together. Uh, I think this would be a good amount of coverage for you both. And then I was going to pass it off to Tom, and he's going to talk a little bit more about long-term care insurance as well as disability insurance. Okay, so thanks, Adam. I'm going to talk briefly about long-term care insurance for you, Jim Jr. and Sharon, but there's something we want to focus on a little bit more that we think is a lot more pressing, and that would be insuring your income. We know you're already insuring your home and your autos, so the next logical step would be to insure your most... Uh, Okay, I'm going to start over. You want to pass it off to you? No. Okay, thanks, Adam. And Jim Jr. and Sharon, thanks for joining us today. I'm not going to talk too much about long-term care, care insurance for you because we have a lot of time to think about that. And we really have a much more pressing issue uh, we have some things that uh, we've prepared that you can take home with you about long-term care insurance, but the uh, thing that we really want to focus on is uh, insuring your income. So we see here that you're insuring your house and your cars, so we think we should uh, add some insurance for one of your most uh, important assets, and that would be your ability to produce income. And there's a few different ways we can do this through total uh, through income disability insurance. And you know, there's a, a few different types of disabilities that these cover. You know, total disability, partial disability, full disability. But we're kind of going to focus on full disability with you because you work a low impact office job with not very much manual labor. So, you know, our recommendation is that you could probably perform that job through a, you know, residual disability or a partial disability up to a certain standard. But whereas with a full disability, you would not be able to work at all. You know, and we see here that you're making about $13,400 a month. So of that, we have about $5,200 earmarked for uh, necessary expenses. And I know you said you're very concerned about sending your kids to good prep schools and colleges and you know you're saving for retirement so with those expenses it adds another forty six hundred dollars on top of your necessary expenses and this comes to ninety eight hundred dollars of your thirteen thousand four hundred dollars of income each month so you know what we're saying is if you were to god forbid get a full disability as a sole income provider um, you have no uh, recourse to provide any income for any of these expenses and that's where disability income uh, clicks in you know so it provides income for your family 
and your kids um, in case of uh, you have a full disabling accident that uh, would prevent you from working, that would prevent you from having any kind of job to provide for your family. And there's some other things we want to talk about, you know, I know uh, Jim, uh, Jim Jr. is a very vital part of your company, and if he were to not be able to work, uh, you would have to find somebody to replace him. So we can put policy writers in there too that provide, um, you know, kind of what we call key person uh, protections, you know, that would provide you money to rehire somebody, train them for this job. Also, another thing uh, to think about down the road, Jim Jr., is, uh, you know, if you were to become disabled, a stock buyout for any future stock that you might own, you know, if you inherit from Jim or your mom, Carla. And that's just something that's built into the disability policy where they could, it would provide them money to buy out your stock that would also help uh, with income for you uh, through your, to help with your disability. You know, and that's kind of the most important thing we see here. And we're going to give you a bunch of things to take home with you and read about and consider. And we'll talk a little bit more about this at the meeting next time. If y'all don't have any questions for Adam or I, we'll see you at the next meeting. Thank you, guys. Thanks.